Monsieur et Mesdames, let me show you Paris, the capital of France and the sentimental capital of the world. It's a beautiful city about which men have written more poems, more novels, more everything than any other city in the world. Let us begin with the Eiffel Tower, 985 feet above the city streets, the tallest structure in all of Europe. Look up to see the tricolor French flag at the top. Look down, and here is the Palais de Chaillot, where the United Nations holds its European session. To the south is the École Militaire, the West Point of France. Everywhere around is Paris, open to the sun and sky. What part of this charming city shall we look at first? Each year, a million tourists ask this question. And each year, a million tourists decide to go for a trip down the Champs-Élysées, or as you might say it, the Fields of Heaven, a great boulevard where the handsome and polite gendarme smiles as you go by. At the western end of the Champs-Élysées is the Arc de Triomphe, built by Napoleon, beneath which a light burns eternally in memory of the unknown soldier of France. Nearby the Champs-Élysées are many architectural landmarks, but already this sightseeing is making one thirsty. In Paris, this is never a problem, and especially along the Champs-Élysées, for we merely sit down at one of the famous sidewalk cafes, summon the waiter, garçon, and he brings up something cool to drink as we watch the world go by. What? <laughs> Another drink? Oh, come now, we cannot sit in the cafes forever, pleasant as that may be. There is still much of Paris to see. We continue our trip down the Champs-Élysées to the Tuileries, the charming gardens and park, favorite scene of artists. It is a restful place in the heart of the city, built by the golden king Louis XIV. In the king's gardens, the children of today ride little donkeys along the paths. From the Tuileries, we see the Place de la Concorde, the place of peace. This is the great square of Paris, where stands the Hotel Crillon, the famous obelisk, and these statues symbolizing the provinces of France. And now, where shall we let fancy take us? We have only just begun. Shall we stroll along the Seine, where the polite river steamers bow to the low bridges as they go by? Shall we cross one of the main bridges over to the left bank? Shall we stop at one of the open-air bookstalls near the river and look for a rare first edition? Shall we go up the Rue Rivoli and stop to greet the little lady who sells flowers in the shadow of the Madeleine, one of the city's historic churches? Shall we visit an open-air food market with the piles of produce fresh and fragrant from the fields and the housewives bargaining over it? Here is a sight that brings many to Paris. It is the salon of one of the great fashion designers, for Paris is the glittering style center of the world, and buyers come from everywhere to see what the Parisian geniuses are doing with the hemline for next season. It is probably in such places that Frenchmen learn to say, ooh la la. What is this, the rush hour? Why, it is only 12 o'clock. But you must understand that in Paris, everybody takes two hours for lunch. Stores and offices closed. It is a civilized custom in a civilized town. At a neighboring restaurant, a truck is bringing something good. It is Champagne, the king of wine, most famous of the noble vintages which are shipped from France all over the world and which are also drunk with great enthusiasm by the French themselves who know a good thing when they have it. 
All this reminds us it is time for lunch. Everywhere in Paris, there are chefs who know how to talk to a filet mignon. And the potatoes, of course, are French fried. We can take our lunch in a small restaurant for 60 francs. With the salad, we have, of course, French dressing. Or if we have much time and much money, we can go to one of the great restaurants, like the Tour d'Argent, which is famous for its pressed duck and the thrilling view of Notre Dame from the window. After lunch, we take a closer look at Notre Dame. This is the rear view, showing the Gothic flying buttresses. If you have a view of Paris, you have a painter painting the view. Everyone comes to Paris to paint. Some are not good painters, perhaps, but at least they are in Paris. Even at the Place du Tête, on top of Montmartre, you will find them putting oil on canvas. Even the children are painting the oriental-looking towers of the Cathedral of Sacré-Cœur. An old-fashioned wedding procession through the streets reminds us that Paris is also the capital of love. A step down from Sacré-Cœur, and we are in Pigalle, in Montmartre. And this is very nice, for night is falling. Paris wakes up and smiles, becomes the city of gaiety and laughter. In a thousand cabarets, there is entertainment for every taste. You will even find the students of Le Jars Hot. It is a night for lovers, for philosophers, for everybody who wants to forget by having a night to remember. At the Tabaran, the corks are popping. The champagne is flowing like champagne. And on the stage, they are doing the can-can. Does anybody have a kick coming? colorful can-can makes an exciting period to our day in Paris, the city of light, the city of history. Once you have seen it, you can never forget it. For 2,000 years, there has been something about this city on the banks of the Seine which has won the hearts of men. Travel the world over, and there will always be a part of your heart that remembers the last time you saw Paris.